This would be my OSCP exam strategy. Yeah, we're actually going back to a topic that I haven't covered in a really long time on this channel. It's what originally helped build my channel uh, in the beginning, but now you know we've branched out into some other topics, but this is one that I've been wanting to speak on for a while, and especially as I learn more stuff, uh, I want to, as I level up, help you guys level up as well. And uh, yeah, I have pretty much compiled a what I would consider a very solid OSCP exam strategy. We've talked strategy in terms of OSCP before. Um, I wanted to tailor this one a little bit more so to the actual exam, which is something that I know a lot of people have questions about. And a lot of people, you know, they're a little bit unsure of, you know, how to approach the exam. I think at this point, the information is out there uh, as far as what is the most optimal way to tackle it. So I'm going to cover that in this video. What's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Now, I think that everyone has their own preference in terms of how to prepare for the OSCP in general, but for the actual exam, the strategy that you employ, it, at this point, I think it's pretty agreed upon that uh, there is a best way in, in, a, in a large sense. And so the way that you actually want to tackle the, the labs is you want to do the buffer overflow box first, right? Because out of the five boxes that you're going to be encountering on the exam, one of them is guaranteed, uh, guaranteed to be a buffer overflow box. And so you really, you know, pretty much goes without saying that you really want to master the basic buffer overflows. Um, so basically what they teach you in the lab part of the course in the PWK, it's going to be just like that. The buffer overflow is going to be uh, pretty much just like that. I believe you can get either a Linux or a Windows box. I I don't think that uh, you're for sure going to get a Windows or for sure going to get a Linux. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong there, but I believe that is the case. And so what you would need to do, you know, just do that one first. But while you're doing that, you want to have the scans going in the background. So use you know, don't do manual scanning. Don't just do manual end maps and manual enumeration. Use a tool like uh, Tiberius's Auto Recon, or uh, I've heard you could also use uh, Sparta and Legion to to basically do the same thing. Me personally, I, I really like the Auto Recon tool. Uh, it pretty much does everything I, I would want it to do. So I use Auto Recon out of my own preference. So what I would, you know, if you're like me, you like to use Auto Recon, just fire up Auto Recon, boom, and then tackle the uh, buffer overflow box. By the time you finish that, which shouldn't take you too long, if you're up to snuff on your buffer uh, overflows, uh, by the time you're finished with that, you'll come back and you'll have all your scan results for the other boxes. And uh, yeah, it's easy enumeration from there because you have all the, the scan data, right? And uh, then you go into your manual stuff, right? So that is how I would recommend actually tackling the exam itself. Now, of course, there's other things that lead up to that. Here's where we get into the little bit more subjective part of the video. How would I actually prepare you or how would I actually recommend to get prepared for the exam before the uh, actual date of the exam, right? So what I would say for this is in terms of lab time, right? I would recommend to get three months lab Unless you're just ultra, ultra confident and you've done tons of boxes, maybe you've done a, a ton of proving grounds boxes, uh, and you want to, you're a more experienced guy, you want to go with like a one month or two month, go for it by all means. But I'd say for most people, you want to go with the three months, and during those three months, so like you want to be grind, you want to be going after it every day, right? Because this is a really, I think, not very often talked about thing. And this was um, the reason that I struggled at this in the beginning is that you do not want to neglect the speed and muscle memory aspect of this skill set if you want this certification. Because you got to keep in mind, on the exam, you only have 24 hours to root five boxes. Um, I think a lot of people, a lot more people could root these, you know, five boxes if they had like, say, four or five days to do so. Um, you know, like I said in the video the other day, they, you know, the, the old adage that uh, a hacker with infinite time could hack into any system. I mean, by and large, it's, it's, it's kind of true, right? Uh, or at least uh, it, he has a way higher likelihood of it, right? So 
you need to, you know, you need to build up your speed and your muscle memory. You could be a naturally ultra smart person, but you just might be slow at actually, you know, you might figure these things out, but it might take you a while to actually root the box or get your shells, things like that. And the only way that that is going to change, the only way you're going to be able to root these things quickly and efficiently is if you get your uh, your reps in and just get your muscle memory in just by doing tons and tons of boxes. So that's why you want to get the three months of lab time. Yeah, you have Hack the Box and Try Hack Me and all these other training platforms. But one thing that I, that a lot of people have agreed upon online uh, in the various OSCP communities is they have said that uh, the boxes in these other platforms, uh, they're just not very OSCP like they're good boxes. Like hack the box is really good. A lot of very real world stuff in there as well. Not just CTF like boxes. There are pretty real world stuff in hack the box for sure, but they're a different type of box uh, than something offsec would put out and something you would encounter on an exam. So you want to be practicing on as close to the real thing as possible. So by no means is training on hack the box bad. I'm not saying that at all. But there are better options if you want to specifically prepare to pass this exam, as I'm sure a lot of you guys do. So in that regard, I would say uh, get your. That's why you want the three months lab time because you know practicing on the boxes that Offsec has created is going to give you your best bang for the buck, if you will. And uh, the second best thing to that is the Offsec uh, proving grounds, particularly the practice boxes, the ones that were created by Offensive Security. Now, I haven't verified this myself, but apparently I've heard that uh, if you go on um, Offsec Proving Grounds, uh, you can actually see which boxes were created by Offsec and which were created by the community. Apparently, the ones by the community are a lot um, less OSCP-like, and the ones created by Offsec are going to be way better to practice on. So just something to keep in mind if you uh, are using that platform. Uh, definitely something that... I wish I would have known uh, in the beginning, right? So, and and where would that fit in? Where would I recommend you fit in offset proving grounds if you want to do that? I would say fill that in if you, in the event that you say you run out of lab time, say you get the three months, uh, you want to, when you're in those three months, you want to root, you know, ideally every single box in there. You want to root as many of the lab boxes as you possibly, possibly can. That is by far going to give you the best preparation for the exam. You got to understand that this is a skill set, right? Just like with programming, right? If you want to learn how to program, yeah, you can read books on it and watch people that are programmers and you'll learn some theoretical knowledge, but you know, you're not going to be able to write code unless you put your hands on the keyboard and actually start writing code. There's just no way around that. Absolutely no. Same thing if you want to learn a martial art, right? You want to learn uh, jujitsu, right? You can read books on it and watch videos of instructors or even get in-person training from instructors, but unless you're actually on the mat rolling with people consistently and getting that experience, that hands-on experience, you're not going to learn the skill set. You're not going to be any good at jujitsu, right? It's just like that for this, uh, you know, for offensive security. You could watch, you know, your favorite streamers, YouTubers. You could watch my content. You could read books. Uh, you know, you could go through the entire lab guide of the PWK, you know, by Offsec, right? But unless, and you could even, here's a mistake that I used to make back in the day. You could do a bunch of boxes and just uh, look up write-ups for them. And like, you know, as soon as you run into some issues for, a, you know, for like an hour or so, just go to a write-up, right? It's not going to teach you as much as if you struggle through it. You actually get hands-on and you actually replicate. The more closely you can replicate the exam environment, the better. In fact, one little bonus tip for you guys that I've heard some people talk about is actually replicating the exam environment to the point that you actually spend, you know, you actually give yourself a 24 hour time frame to hack, you know, five different OSCP boxes, maybe in the lab or something like that, just to simulate that environment. So by the time you get into the exam, it's not the first time you've ever experienced this. You've done it before. And, uh, 
that will, you know, that will greatly, uh, you know, when you have a little bit of experience like that, will greatly ease the situation. So you want to make sure you're getting hands on. I just can't stress this enough. I know I've been harping on this for a while now, but that's because it's so important. You want to make sure you're just doing as many boxes as you can. Now back to what I was trying to say earlier, where do I recommend you guys slot in OSPG? So if you, you get the three months, you run out of the lab time and say you have like a retake coming up on your exam and you have that gap where, you know, you need to prepare for it, but you don't have labs. That's where you can get a subscription to OFSEC Proving Grounds and uh, just continue on doing boxes on there. Unless there's really a ton of boxes on the lab you didn't get to, you want to get a, a month or something, then yeah, I guess go for that. But uh, yeah, you can make the judgment call there. But yeah, that's where I would recommend it. So hopefully this video has helped you guys. Haven't made any content on OSCP stuff in a while and wanted to share what I had learned in the meantime. So if you guys have been enjoying the content and enjoying, you know, the mentorship from me as well and, uh, you know, the free content that I put out, you want to work closer with me, I will be putting out a course uh, in the uh, very near future, actually. I plan to start at the very beginning of November. Signups will be the end of October. For that, we'll be covering web app pen testing. So all things related to becoming a web application pen tester. I look forward to seeing a lot of you guys in there. Go ahead and follow the link in the description to join that. And also, if you want to watch some more videos to get into some more technical content, I got that on the screen right here for you. See you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.